my check, my check. Yeah, a lot of y'all been talking about my mic, and I think I got it fixed. Hey, what's good, YouTube? I'm DeWine. If you didn't know, I'm all about helping you become more curious, more informed, and more educated, so you can really make an impact in this IT industry. So I was on LinkedIn, I believe it was Monday, or it may have been last week. I'm not sure, but I saw an article that really piqued my interest. Cisco recently released a brand new white paper. It's called the Cisco Global Cloud Index Forecast and Methodology. Okay, now there were a ton of articles on this, and the original article that I that I saw, I'll go ahead and shout them out, was at Network World. Basically, what's going on is Cisco saying that in three years, most data centers as we know them will be in the cloud. I don't know if you all have heard of AWS, Azure, software as a service, infrastructure as, as a service. That's pretty much really taking over right now. It's been one of those things that I'm, I don't mention enough about just because for me, I always looked at it as, you know, small to medium sized businesses. They're always to last to do things, but it's so cost effective for these companies to migrate to the cloud and security has improved drastically that I'm not sure what the data center will really look like cisco would definitely have a better forecast idea than i do before i keep going don't stop getting your ccna don't stop getting any certifications continue continue on the path that you're traveling but be curious the whole purpose of me putting out the information that i've been putting out is so you all will know what's going on and then also have an idea of where you might want to go after you get your current certification because the CCNA is definitely a stepping stone certification. It should not be where you stop. It should be where you may begin and it should be where you may change your life, you know, in a better direction, but it should not be the end destination, the stopping point of you getting educated, getting informed and advancing your skills. So please keep going. Now, here's the complete article It's the white paper it's pretty long but it talks about everything from um iot to data centers global data centers businesses um commercial it talks about everything when it comes to the cloud it's it's a really in-depth article and i'm i'm not sure what we're going to go from here i actually have a friend who owns a software as a service company um, what they do is basically they develop applications for companies and they host them on the Microsoft Azure platform. And it's becoming more and more prevalent because there's there's a couple books. I don't know if you all have Safari books, but when we talk about serviceless environments, basically you can take an application and sit it in the cloud and it's not sitting on the server. I'm not sure if you all have ever worked in the data center, but when I first started, sometimes I would have to build a server that was strictly for one application. <laughs> and that's all that server did was manage that one application. And then fast forward to, I would say 2015, you know, when I was working in the data center, we would have to spin up one virtual server that only managed one application. Now, granted the data center that we house, you know, those servers cost a ridiculous amount of money to virtualize the environment in VMware. We still had to, you know, pay the electricity to house the stores to house the um the host to house the routers the switches everything in that along with you know the backup generators all that that you put in a data center to maintain it you know, the hvac system all that is an extreme cost for organizations in the cloud is basically saying okay we'll charge you by the hour for the amount of service that you use before I, bl I believe it was like about a month. Now you can spin up a server about an hour. So if you just need to test something for, let's say a day, you know, you pay a couple dollars pretty much to spin up a server and get your application going. And then it's live <laughs> immediately. You know, that's man, the cloud is something that can really change the game. But like I said, check out this network world article. Um, here's the, the white paper from Cisco. I will leave all these in the description. And then there's also another article that I found on Znet that talks about it too. So you'll have a 
couple different perspectives on what it is. I'm not diving deep enough into it, but basically three years, they're saying that 94% of workloads will be in the cloud, computing workloads, that is. It's, that's amazing. So check that out. Now, for those of you that are interested in AWS, so you can actually do AWS training for free. Um, not full certification training, but to get familiar with it, if you are interested in that, I'll leave a link for this in the description. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, you know, check some YouTube videos out. If you're on CBT Nuggets, uh, I believe they have uh, some training on AWS. You know, YouTube it, get familiar with it. Check out some books. If you're on Safari books, there's plenty of books on Safari with AWS. But like I said, you can sign up for a free, free account. Um, is, I guess you get 12 months free or whatever. And you just go in there and get familiar with, with it. It has some training videos. They're all free. Check them out and just get informed. Be curious because you may find that this is your interest. And if it is your interest, you know, that's a great way to go. So if you all are also interested in Azure, which is Amazon's competitor by Microsoft or whatnot, they have free training courses online also. And I'll put a link in the description for this. You can sign up for a free account. The, I'm not sure. I have not checked this out yet, but I believe if you go to Azure, Microsoft's Azure site, there is some training there. Like I said, here's some video courses that they have online for free. And then I believe they may have the same type of environment that Amazon offers because, because they definitely are going to need more people to be able to support these applications, to be able to support these servers in the cloud, to be able to su support the servers and everything that's involved with these companies, you know, offload into the cloud and, you know, having these hybrid environments. So they're going to need support for that. So those skill sets. If you guys are all interested, check it out. You know, for all you programmers, get your Docker and your Angler game up, you know, because the future is really bright. But the thing about programming, and I was talking, when I was talking to my friend, we were, you know, I was talking about, you know, my interest in coding. And he was saying the difference between you wanting to do networking and, you know, being a system administrator previously was that, you know, you're only going to have to really compete with people in your geographical location that's pretty much who you all already compete with but when it comes to programming you're actually competing with people all over the world to build and support applications because a lot of times these companies want these applications built and they may send them overseas which brings up a kind of interesting point when i got out the military in um 2006 2007 some of you may remember but it was like all oh, support levels were outsourced to like india <laughs> especially like calling dale for support or something you know you will always speak to someone overseas that's kind of came back to not being like that because i believe a lot of people were so frustrated that they were having these system issues and these network issues but now you got a communication barrier you know that you have to deal with when you're actually should just be calling about a problem so a lot of people used to complain about that then which i mean that's one of those things with it just took a lot of education and cultural intelligence for you know companies and organizations to evolve because whenever you're dealing with um, people from another background another country you know there is going to be a learning curve and everyone has to have patience you know because my way isn't always the right way to do it you know i would live overseas for um about six years of my life and so when I was over there, you know, I was heavily involved in the culture, have plenty of friends that still live over in Europe that I'm really close with. So there's just a, a learning curve and no matter what's going on, but it's, it's an easier learning curve when people can adapt and accept everyone for who they are. So, but that's something else. Anyway, check out Azure, check out the Cisco article about the cloud and also check out AWS. And if you have questions, I would definitely like to have a conversation about where networking, where system administration, where infrastructure is going as a whole on a small, medium and large scale, 
to see, you know, let's, and also let's talk about the private cloud and the public cloud to really have a good conversation for those that may have questions and may not understand. So those of you that are in the field that are in that area, feel free to chime in. And those of you that aren't in the area, but are curious, chime in, ask questions so we can have a good conversation. I hope this video was informative for you. I appreciate everyone's support and I'll catch up with y'all later. Peace.